I wasn't allowed on estrogen. In order to access it under the terms of Gender Recognition Act, I needed to prove I lived two years as a woman. But for me, serving a life sentence, that was impossible. I decided enough was enough and resorted to drastic measures in December 2017, and I cut my testicles off when I was in my prison cell. And that's how we start this video. Hello, my name is Trey, and welcome to What Can I Change? Today, we're talking about Sarah Jane Beggar in her prison sentence, or his prison sentence, I must say. There was so much blood, I nearly died, but it meant the clinic had to give me estrogen. I couldn't cope anymore, but without testosterone, you would end up in the same conditions as a woman. Um, risk of breast cancer, osteoporosis, so it had to balance out. I'll be on estrogen the rest of my life. So I got a video, guys, I want to show you guys. Hmm? A video, a very interesting video coming from an individual who is so wild that they cut off their own testicles in the prison cells. Okay? <clears throat> so let's hop right into this video. I'm very... whoop dee daisy I was going to come here and be really fluffy and be really nice and say, yeah, be really lovely and queer and gay. No, if you see a turf, punch him in the fucking face. I was going to come here and... <sighs> Remember, this is coming from an individual who said that they were so desperate they cut off their testicles in the prison cells. Let's talk a little bit more about the story, okay? And then we'll uh, continue on. Let's uh, hop on in. Sometimes <laughs> I gotta make sure the thing is up. I was born in Brixham, London. I lived in a Georgia Terrence townhouse. We really had a good house in Norwood. Moving on. I got my very first seven year sentence in 1988 for beating up my stepmother's brother and the rest of the time was added when I was already inside. I was one of the many working class people whose default was to go to prison rather than hire a good solicitor. I ended up in the Fathom Young Offenders Institute, the first of 29 prisons, prisons I entered. Moving on. I was a male in a I was in a male prison for the entirety of my sentence, and that's a dangerous place to be as a trans woman. I've lost counsel how many times uh, how many things had happened to me inside. You can see my scars. I've been cut with razor blades. I was stripped, pinned down. I had boiling hot water and sugar poured all over me. I got stabbed. In Wakefield, I was graped. And in uh, Fifthville, I was gang graped. The group stuck a pool, a pool cue in, my, in me. Every time something happened, I tried to get released. It was the 13th parole board that released me. The staff wouldn't take responsibility for my safety. They said, well... What do you think was going to happen? And this is what we just read. There was so much blood, I nearly died. And this is what he said. He resorted to cutting off his testicles. I want to see one thing. I wanted you to read this part. Transgender prisoners are just, uh, aren't just one group. We're a multitude of people who have committed multitude of different um, have a multitude of different offenses. When I'm on my feet, I want to start a campaigning group called Transgender Prisoners Alliance. I have to either represent everyone or no one. But by representing anyone, I am obligated to represent anyone who is transgender. The problem is, is we're not all in for shoplifting. Some of us, some of them are some of the worst child sex offenders in the world. They committed some of the most horrendous crimes. I demand the right to judge anyone I want privately, but I don't think it's for me to impouse my views publicly. I don't know who is guilty, who is innocent, who pleaded guilty to an innocent charge, who has killed someone or not. It's between the judge and the victims and God. This kind of person is the person we have saying punch people in the face. This person says, oh, I want to be all loving. I want to be all true. I want to be happy for you guys. I want to really uh, show you guys how much it means to be uh, a loving person for these individuals. But no, if you see a turf, punch them in the face. Pretty much, guys, uh, a turf is what, you know, they made up a word, but a turf is really just somebody who's a person who says that a trans person is not a woman. Um, it's normally a female, right? It's a female. They, it's, the F stands for feminist at the end. 
it's normally a female who is against trans people. And so they're saying if you see a woman who says that a woman is a woman, you punch them in the fucking face. Hey, I'm just giving verbatim. If we continue to cite this violence against people, I don't understand. This is what I really don't understand when it comes to this whole community. And I'm sorry for people who say this isn't trans people. That's out the window. That's dead. That's dead. Okay. This movement, and we have to call it what it is, the trans movement. Is every trans person like this? No. But the ones that are, there's not enough of y'all to, there's not enough of y'all who aren't like this that I see now. We saw at the Pride Parades, we saw, we've been seeing this all year, since last year, going into locker rooms, exposing children, doing all this stuff, man. I'm sorry, but this is the trans community. community. I'm sorry if you're not a part of this and you're trans. Uh, we have to go against the, the movement. We're not necessarily going against y'all, okay? But hear me out. Hear me out. Ever since this has all got started and got cracking, it has been more and more and more violent. And they're asking you now to punch women in the face and you hear people cheering. They are inciting violence in these people. You notice when you see these people at a, uh, at a, like a pride parade or a protest, they are so vicious. They are so mentally fragile and broken. They snap when you say anything. You're like, well, women are... Uh, only women can be women. They feel like they really, it feels like they're going to take your life. Y'all saw what happened to Riley Gaines. They were punching her in the face and locked her up in a room for three hours. You see what happens when they try to go to these uh, festivals, man. People just start ripping down your signs and you think you might just pass away. And I'm serious. It's going to get so bad. Eventually, if we don't tackle this, it will get so bad that eventually I believe they will start uh, literally attacking people. And you will go to one of these parades and either one or two things are going to happen. We're going to really start standing up against this movement and it will be a battle like none other. Or they'll start getting special rights. They'll be like, hey, if you don't want to get beat up, don't even go to the rally. I think and I know there's going to be some states and some cities that do that. They're going to be like, hey, if you don't want to get hurt, do not come here. I promise you, these people are insane. But love is love. That's just how it's going to be. I don't believe that we're making... Um, once again, I don't believe we're helping these people by calling them male, calling them female, calling them whatever they want. You see, it doesn't matter. This person just said, punch them in the face. This whole, we're just going to bow down and conform. You can't conform to people like this. These people are insane. And I'm sorry to say that, but their sanity has left the building. They're really inciting violence. All that stuff is gone now. Because if you empower these people and start giving into the pronouns, they're just going to keep using that fear. And then there's going to be people who aren't even trans, who people who don't even care about being trans. They are simply just going to call themselves trans to have power over you. Think about that for a second. Imagine if if you're just a regular guy, and you say something, uh, you're not going to get no no help, no pushback. You get called misogynist, all that kind of stuff. But if you become a trans man, oh, now we got to bow down. We now we got to listen to you. Now we got to we got to listen to everything you say. Now we get to win beauty pageants. Now we get to be in sports. All of this stuff. Now they got true power. When when you become trans, you get true power. Not everywhere. But if we don't put a foot down on this, you will see more men becoming trans women because of how much power it gives them. Not only over women, it'll give them crazy power over us men. They'll have power over other men because they're untouchable. And you, we really can't, and if you, obviously you can't do anything mean to these people. Sorry. You can't do anything mean to these people because if you were to, let's say, if you, I don't, I would never say do anything with violence. But if a trans person gets beat up, that would only empower them. I'm all for being stern, but we cannot start inciting violence because the second that happens on our side from the people who are against these trans people, it would only cause more of an uproar. It would give them more power. So we are in a deep hole, but the only way we can continue to fight this is against with the law in some places and continuing to hear your voice, continue to stand up and don't be afraid of these people. They're going to try to put you under their boots and we can't allow that. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. I'm out of here. Goodbye.